Today is Wednesday, March 20th. And I'm wondering if you, like me, almost everybody else in America, if you're filling out your NCAA basketball brackets today, maybe a little advice for you next. And now a word from our title sponsor. Are all financial advisors fiduciaries? Fewer than you think, not knowing could reduce your lifestyle. Hi, I'm Mitch Kramer, founder and CEO of Fluent Financial. A fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management. A fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company ahead of yours. At Blunt Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. Introducing Star Power Smart Home Solutions, where cutting edge technology meets effortless living. Control your entire home with just a tap on your smartphone. Adjust the lights, set the perfect temperature, and ensure your home is secure, all from the palm of your hand. Star Power has the experts that will transform your house into a secure smart home. Experience the ultimate solution in comfort and security for your family. Get started at GetStarPower.com. Star Power, where innovation meets home. The NCAA tournament has exploded as a wagering event. There are two great wagering events in America, the Super Bowl and the NCAA basketball tournament. And people who have never been on football during the year or basketball during the year will bet on the Super Bowl or the tournament, which I don't understand, but I don't understand a lot of stuff. Okay, there's also the enormous number of people who play office pools, friends, family, big national pools. You fill out the bracket, you hope to win it. Well, my friend Mark Lawrence, who's one of the smartest handicappers of sports I've ever met in my life, has a formula. I'm going to give it to you. It's a formula for narrowing the 64-team field down to three or five or seven teams that qualify to potentially win the NCAA basketball tournament. I'm going to start with the formula, then I'll tell you its success and the teams who qualify this year. Here's the formula. To win the NCAA tournament, a team should be a number one, two, or three seed from a major conference. The team must have averaged over 73 points a game, and allowed under 73 points a game. And the victory margin must be more than seven points per game over the season. They must have faced a top 75 schedule and have a coach that's made six or more NCAA tournaments and have made it to the Elite Eight at least once. And finally, here's an either or. This qualifying team must have either played in the NCAA tournament last year or have an All-American player. Okay, that's your formula. Sometimes this formula has narrowed the list of potential winners down to three, three, and the winner was in there. This year, there's seven. How good has this formula been? at picking the eventual winner, that the team is in there somewhere in the candidates. 19 of the last 21 years. Okay, here's your teams this year. Three number one seeds, UConn, North Carolina, Purdue. Three number two seeds, Arizona, Marquette, Iowa State. And one number three seed qualifies, Baylor. Again, UConn, North Carolina, Purdue, Arizona, Marquette, Iowa State, and Baylor. Top-seeded teams that do not qualify, number one seed Houston, number two seed Tennessee, number three seeds Illinois, Kentucky, and Creighton, and, of course, the rest of the field. Okay, let's, let's do some fun facts. Seven of the last ten. NCAA champions did not win their conference tournament. They got upset and eliminated early or very early. 
So of the seven qualifying teams this year, which ones didn't win their conference tournament? North Carolina, Purdue, Arizona, Marquette, and Baylor. That would narrow the list to five. Okay, some notes for your pools. There have been 38 NCAA tournaments since the field was expanded to 64 teams in 1985. Yeah, I know there should have been 39. But remember, the tournament was canceled for the pandemic a couple of years ago. The winner. Of the 38 NCAA tournaments, 24 have been won by a number one seed. Five have been won by a number two seed. Four have been won by a number three seed. So the one, two, three seeds covered 33 of the last 38 teams that won the NCAA tournament. Now, last year, by the way, a number four seed did win. So let's talk game one. Let's talk game one, picking your pools. The number one seed in NCAA tournament history has lost in the first round. No, they don't. They've won 99%. And the number two seed has won 93%. There may be an upset in there, but believe me, it's not worth hunting that upset. Number three seeds have won 86%. That's solid. Ooh, then number four seeds. They've won 76%. So on the average, every year, one of the four number one seeds, or I'm sorry, one of the four number four seeds will be upset in the first round. That would be by a number 13 seed. Picking upsets. Now you get down to the five, six, seven seeds. Number five seeds have won only 65% in the first round. Number six, 62%. Number seven, 61%. There's lots of upsets in this area. So don't be afraid to pick in this area. My draw, my bracket. I've posted on my Twitter page at Norm's Clubhouse. And by the way, it's also posted on Facebook. And I've indicated, I start with round two, the winners of round one, and I've indicated with a highlighter, underdogs that I feel could, will win in the first round. Good luck. On April 8th, CBS will play, once the game is over, one shining moment. It has become the anthem of the Final Four. But oddly, it was not written for the Final Four. One Shining Moment was actually written to be the song at the end of Super Bowl XXI. But the coverage ran long. They didn't have time for the song. And now One Shining Moment is the song of the NCAA basketball tournament. Today's episode brought to you by Fluent Financial, Retire Sooner, Better Lifestyle, and by Star Power, Love Where You Live. Just Wondering is a production of DSP Media for FanStream Sports. You can find Norm's show along with other great programming at fanstreamsports.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, hit follow. And every weekday, a fresh new episode of Just Wondering will be delivered right to you. And if you enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend. Finally, should you have questions or comments, please share them with us by going to X and our address at Norm's Clubhouse. That's Just Wondering with Norm Hitzkus. And every day, I'll be just wondering about something.